I hope, I hope you guys are putting something about this barrage that they uh, <laughs> Because one of the, th the, big, the big con at the moment is they're uh, talking about this barrage as being a huge um, uh, power generator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I ask you about that? Yeah. 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 I think that's good. Yeah. 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 I'm wearing a rubber I mean, a lot of. Um, what do you think about that? The barrage. Um, a lot of it been, which has been publicized has been made out to be it's going to be a, a huge natural uh, power generator. You know, 7% of the figures that I think they're banding about. Um, the problem is if you look at other similar systems or generation schemes being put in place, one of the major problems they talk about is silt. Uh, as you've probably seen in this river here, um, we have a major amount of silt flowing down this river. Uh, now if you uh, build a, a barrage across the river, basically forming a dam, and the river slows, the salt falls out of the river, and the river shallows. Um, if you have no storm or um, large amounts of volume of water carrying that silt out to sea, what happens is as the, tire, as the river gets shallower, when you have these surges, you're going to have a huge problem of flooding because of the shallow water is going to spread out of a distance. And all these um, schemes I've got along the river here of um, natural flood defences, as we saw this summer, are going to be overtopped. Now, it was only a miracle that um, when we had the floods in June, we were also at the lowest point of the tidal curve. Um, and it was a neap tide, in other words, the lowest point in the lunar cycle as well. And apparently they say it was only two inches from topping the, um, the substation down, which is just such a mile from here. Now, if you have a big tide during the winter, large flows of water, you have a shallow estuary at the same time, um, where's all that water going to go? And if the, there's this huge barrage stopping that natural uh, progression of water out to sea, it's going to form this massive flood behind the barrage. The water's not going to be able to get out fast enough. And you're going to have lost on the water. Uh, trying to evacuate half a million people in winter, so. And um, so, uh, we're talking a huge, huge, huge problem. I mean, you know, the bore is a, is a natural phenomenon. I mean, it's one of the wonders of the world. I mean, people travel all over the world to come and see this. I mean, I've got people from South Africa who come over here. We've got, we know people from Australia have come over to see it. Um, uh, you know, a lot of it's been made. You know, we're not uh, some sort of surfer group who's just anti-barrage because, you know, we, we, we're worried it's going to destroy the, you know, the wave. That is not, you know, where I'm coming from at all. But you've got to look at it in totality. I mean, the amount of, you're talking a huge amount of stone for a start to build this weir. I mean, where's all that stone going to come from? I mean, how are they going to transport it? If, are they going to bring it in by sea? If they're going to bring it in by sea, there's only certain boats that can travel during the winter period, certainly from Scotland to bring the stone down, because the local quarries here won't be able to produce it. Um, and the roads. I mean, we've got enough lorries and you know, wagons and stuff like that on the road causing congestion. You're talking millions and millions of tons of stone. Now, where is that all going to come from? And if they're talking about concrete patients, I mean, those two are going to have to be transported. You know, logistically, it's going to be a nightmare. For everybody in that Lydney, Bristol, you know, Chepstow area. And you've got the seven crossings there as well. You know, it's just... I think I, I, I think it's a it's a red herring. Uh, I really think a lot of it's a red herring. I mean, the feasibility reports have been done. They've spent millions in the past doing these feasibility reports, and they've all said no. It's all been turned down on our environmental reasons, uh, cost and silt. And for them to keep on going on about it, I think it's, you know, if they wanted to really do a small scale tile project, why not try the Menai Straits? Or, some of these um, very narrow, deep channel um, areas in Scotland, for example. They've got these narrow firths there, very strong tidal flows. They could build, you know, it's only a couple of hundred meters across, and they could build a small, or series of small turbines in these, literally, like forwards. And they could generate, say, with 20, the same amount of power as they could with one huge white elephant, which I think is probably what it's going to turn into. Great, that's great, that's great.